and welcome on back to the BTS house coverage with Moonduck, of course. Thank you. Is that okay? Yep. Would you like me to put anything in front of Moonduck, like the illustrious Moonduck? No. Or, no, okay. No. You just say our name like once every three hours. I'm, I'm once cool. every three hours. Yeah, something like that. That's fine. That's fine. Welcome on back, my Send friend, Sindarin. Joining us in. Oh, we we are uh, chicken. Yeah. We are elbow deep into some CIS coverage. And <laughs> it's been real messy so far. <laughs> it has been quite the show. So Did anyone else lose their sound in the left ear or just me? Uh, that would be just you. Okay, I think I'm back. We're good. Oh, okay. Maybe it wasn't the headset. Maybe it was myself. Colorblind, smell like chicken. partial okay, deafening. Again. You're having a slow stroke, I think, over there. Um, uh, Rob's going to come out here and molest you a little bit, he said. Okay, yeah, looking forward to that as always. I'm refreshing uh, the page here. Maybe we hit like some sort of like mid-pool break intermission or something like that. I'm not seeing the next game pop up right away, mm. but we're flying through this pretty quick. We're getting through all these heats pretty dang fast here. Here we go, CIS. Yeah, okay, good. They're updated. So currently, gentlemen, as it stands, top three are Double Dimension, Team Empire, and Team Spirit, all two and one. Empire, we haven't even watched yet. Who did it's Empire lose to? Empire beat Vega, beat the uh, fake Navi stack, and lost to Gambit. Gambit, that was their only win. Gambit dropped one game. They are one and one, along with the... 20 min AFK team, that pseudo Navi team with don't, Espada and Fly to Moon. Don't sleep on Gambit. Don't sleep on Gambit. Yeah, don't like you said, Gambit. that was their only win in their one and one. Gambit really is. Made that sound oh, yeah. More dire than it was. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> They're one and one. They're right in the middle of the road. Yeah, the Afterlife Yoku team. Big num. I'm actually curious to watch those guys. Hopefully, we get to peep into one of their matches here soon. And then Vega, the only team to be 0 and 3 down there at the bottom. Quite a surprise for our invited direct team. Direct invites. Direct it. Let's make sure hey, we put it out there they were invited. Direct so. direct regional invites doesn't mean shit this year. We're just going to do – they should just do open quals, all positions moving forward. That's a tournament for a tournament. It's supposed to be like a – this is like us – like a the candy before the main course. <laughs> yeah, right. And instead, now it's like, well, this is literally like the potential – like it, it's so much drama potential, but it's hard for it to land is the problem. Because mm -hmm. because real teams no like basically teams that are on the edge of pro teams like your top twenty team in the world they can dumpster opens every single time. The only the only uh, upset possibility is if they play another team that's around the same caliber. That's like the only the only thing that could really get. There crazy are some like ninja stacks in there though that they'll they'll creep forward. You know they got three meh friends who play support, but then they might have two like high MMR core players who could just baby upset Navi or something like that. So you really never but that, know. But that double dimension knocked Navi out of at least one of the opens. And yeah, now so they're Na like top Well, Soneko so stack sounded like something that was just thrown together the day before or something. And they also knocked Navi out. So mm -hmm. And the second one. Yep. It can happen. There are, there are surprises, especially in a region like CIS. I think the like the amount of really high-skilled CIS players, if you look across like the European leaderboard, there are so many mechanically high-skilled CIS yeah. players. Yeah. That you can make those stacks, and if they play well and get their oh. heroes, they can take a game. And they're playing one. with that like fire so. of, what if I beat my old team, or what if we yeah. actually do this? And they just have that extra drive. And yeah. they're not in that easy position of, you know, I'm making salary, I'm doing money. No, now it's time you have to like fight. Raw dog They're style. just not stable. They need five people who can stand playing with each other. I think there's a lot of ego in the CIS, and as you mentioned, a lot of mechanically skilled players, probably the most in, in Europe, probably in top 100, are from Russian. Yeah. You can say that about a lot of the regions. A lot of, a lot of real superstars out there, they just need someone to rope them together, tell them the right things to do, give them the maybe experience guidance a bit, and then they can really shine. Exactly. All, all the top teams have a captain who they respect. I think that's what they lack in CIS region. Mm. Mm. I would really add something to this, but I literally don't yep. have any experience uh, with a plain pro oh. in the CIS oh, region. <laughs> working with an experienced captain? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's we Yeah, we didn't have one of those either. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a damn fact. All right, well... Don't worry, I'll save you. We have a game ready to go. <laughs> it looks like we are going to be stepping into the Sonico stack, and they are playing against Gambit. We get to watch Gambit, guys. This is actually a pretty good test for them. Uh, was this game played during one of the Opens? I think it was. I think the last Open qualifier, these teams played for second place, and I want to say Sonico stack won, and then Gambit won the third place game. 
So Nico team beat them 2-1. I'm pretty sure about this. We're trying to look at it right now as mm. well. In the open number two. CIS, are you taking one first? Let's number two. Oh, a lone druid Chen. No, it was. Is sure? that number two you're looking at right now? Yeah. Yep. 2-1 for so Nico's stack. stack. Yep. Against Gambit. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. And then yeah. Gambit beat their opponent 2-0, I guess, in the next round? Scroll down a little bit. Yes, Whatever that. Yep. Yes. Okay. Bokai. That's what I thought. Okay. Whatever that is. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think this is a pretty close matchup. I cast one of the games. I think I cast game three of that series. Uh, and it was very close with a lot of uh, intensity. And there's some of the some similarities between that game and this one. There's the Chen for Big Num. Mm. And I think the Doom was also run by Sonico's team in that matchup. So a bit of a bit of stability in the drafts as far as that goes. The carry matchup of that game was um, Gambit had a super farmed Luna who didn't end up winning against a an Ember and Gyro, I think, were the cores on Sonico's deck. So we'll see if any of those two get banned out in the second phase. Looks like Gambit have banned Lifestealer so far. I guess they want to go Bear Lone Druid. Uh, I don't consider Lifestealer a good counter to the ranged loan, but it's decent against the bear, the bear build, so... They have Maledict against the bear. And Infernal Blade is really good, too. Yes. Actually. I'm not sure what to feel about Witch Doctor. Because th was he first picked, or was he picked after the Chen? I didn't see. I if only we had zero sponsors, we could tell. Chen was first pick. So uh, first pick <laughs> was, uh, yeah, the Chen. Sorry, I could look. I'm right not here. sure that the Witch Doctor is oh, he's right. a good counter to a... To a Chen, just peeking out there, right on the right. bottom, right there, right Especially there. Especially since see. the latest nerf to Witch Doctor, it's just a huge nerf, and uh, I'm not sure that he's that strong of a hero anymore. I bring the sponsors back. I feel like you pick him as a counter, almost only, whereas he used to be a stable. Just oh, we need a strong laner, let's get Witch Doctor. Yeah, but is he really a counter to Chen early on? I mm -hmm. I don't think so. He's one of the better ones. I would say. I watched uh, one of Navi's games uh, when they got eliminated, I think, uh, and they played a CM. Where you kind of just followed the Chen around killing the big creeps. It was cool. They got stomped, though. I think Maiden is... Is just garbage against Chen. I just... I, it's okay against Chen. The problem is, so the old Chen, right? The reason you picked Maiden against Chen was that you would go and frostbite the big creep, and it would hurt for Chen. He has 10 second cooldown persuasion now. It used to be 30. So if Maiden was following Chen around and getting rid of that creep, yes. it actually had high impact. Now it doesn't really. It's the same logic when you're playing Doom counter jungle against Chen. Back then, it felt nice to eat Chen's big creep. Now he's like, oh, you have a 70 second cooldown on your spell? Well, I have a 10 second cooldown on mine. I'll just go get a new one and bully you away after that. So it's like it doesn't really, it doesn't really work that way anymore. I think Chen's biggest counters actually got nerfed a lot by his buff to Holy Persuasion. So the hero, I think, is really strong and... Uh, we see it across all regions, I think, this Chen being run. In Europe qualifiers, yep. it was a top pick for many of the teams. Uh, if you do have a Chen player, I would definitely recommend you first face this hero in this patch. I think it's really, really good. Yeah, it seems like Chen and Wisp are like the two supports. Yes. Like you, Everybody needs to have supports who can play these heroes yeah. in and every the region. And since spawn at the one minute mark, you get Penance level 1, and the Torb of Venom you're pretty much like a Wind Ranger, but stronger at level 1. Yeah, Penitence is so much better than it used to be. It's like twice as good. It used to be 10%, now it's 18. And it's so. an 8 second slow. <laughs> it's actually a really good spell. So, yeah. Most of the times we see Chen's do one of two things. If they feel like there's a lane they can have an impact in from level 1, they go there, skill Penitence, and harass with their offlane, and they buy an Orb of Venom, or sorry, uh, Blightstone. Mm -hmm. And if they feel like that's not a possibility, they have to just idle a little bit, get their... Uh, get that sort of spell and go from there. So, the persuasion. Okay. Disruptor for Gambit. This is, like, I don't know if there's a more iconic pick for CIS than Disruptor. <laughs> I feel like Disruptor right? has been the CIS hero for two full years. Yeah. Like, this, every team almost plays it. And even when it fell out of favor, they were still running it. They didn't uh, really care what the rest of the world was doing. Seen, so. Like, while well, FNG and his team were on top, he'd play it all the time. Virtus Pro, Solo, hand-in-hand yeah. hand playing that hero. Yeah, you're right, man. I mean, see disruptor if all you're the forcing time. action with like Lone Druid Chen, Disruptor just fits in really well because um, if if you're just this like slow pushing lineup, but you can glimpse somebody all the way back, it's it's much easier to grab fights. So and they need like how it sets up. They need a catch, right? Like Chen Lone have no catch. Yeah. The classic way of going about this with the second support for Chen is that you get a second support that sets Chen's creep up for success. And the common ones are Rubik and Shadow Demon. I don't know if Rubik... Rubik is actually available. I think they could have definitely grabbed that. I would have liked that for Gambit as a pick, but maybe they don't like it so much in the patch anymore. I don't like it against uh, Tusk and Witch Doctor. I think it's too uh, vulnerable. It's it's definitely... Uh, it's a double-edged sword. Like, you can catch, but at the same time, you're very vulnerable, like you said. And Disruptor is at a much safer distance against these 
especially the tusk. It's nice not to be that many good steals as well. I would argue, like it's a little bit inconsistent. Doom, cask, shards. It's like it's some okay. of those, some of those are good, but they're kind of they're very situational abilities yeah. other than Doom, obviously. So it's like I, I think Disruptor is just a lot more straightforward. Just instantly good at fighting. Um, has uh, anti mobility stuff. So if if they try to abuse using like cask and shards and initiations, they can counter with Disruptor while also giving them the catch they need. I think it covers the bases. In addition to that, I think the CIS team is very lane focused, as most regions are right now, very focused on laning. But CIS maybe that tiny bit more, and Rubik is just a weak laner. Yep. Disruptor deals a lot more damage. Uh, is a safer pick for that reason. They might feel like if they go Rubik, even though he's good with Chen, when do we really get to play the two heroes together? Like, they need their other lane to be able to hold its own. Yeah. So, Disruptor will get the job done. Curious to see if they put this Lone Druid mid. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm looking forward to seeing. Kunkka as a matchup, I think, is Lone favored after level 5, especially. Kunkka is a melee hero. He's going to always be in range to get entangled if he wants to see us. What about 6 and on, though? Because surely you get any rotation, and Lone Druid is killable if he's not in bear yes, form. Yes, he is. I think that they're it's a what, volatile matchup. What, I they're think. Think, what they're thinking about either Lone Druid mid or have a good matchup against Kanka. It's it's hard because you're playing against Kanka and whatever you pick. There's a Tusk on the other side, so easy ganks to get, especially when Kanka hits level six. I mean, even like early on, if Tusk rotates with like if Kanka has like X and Torrent, and you have shards on top of that, that Lone Druid is gonna die. Is what it feels like. I would not recommend putting Gyro mid this game. I feel like it's they just. Druid. I think they locked themselves here. They have to put lone mid. Gyro is awful against Tusk Kunkka. I think you're just gonna die all the time. Mm. When Kunkka gets level one X, he can always reach you if you go for CS. Snowball in, easy kill. You can't really play that lane. Lone, however, higher range. The bear will always be a threat to the Kunkka. He has easier time CSing against Tidebringer. He actually has. Two units that deal damage. That's the other thing about Gyro mid. I think the hero's just not very good at farming in the lane. You need to have really exceptional lane mechanics to win a lot of the hard uh, matchups right now. x so. is really good here. They needed uh, they need somebody in Gamut that can kind of stop uh, 20 minute from running at them. Because that's really all their heroes do. Yeah. Well, Sanking's still in the pool. That's low cooldown. They can fight all the time. Don't have any big ulti cooldowns besides Disruptor ulti. So they should play around that. Maybe play on the boat and Doom cooldown. What else could we see out of Gambit? Who's Gambit's offlane player? I can't see the names from here. I think I it's know. Afterlife. Afterlife? He plays, he likes Sanking a lot. I think that's the go to pick for him in this position, probably. He played it yesterday as well in the series I watched. So, Sanking. What else is there really? They Under need a. Underlord? Does he play Underlord at all? Uh, I think he does. I. I don't know about that hero here. It's like the only catch they have if they go Underlord is the Glimpse. So they're forced to. Make the enemy team run away at first, but what if they just stand their ground and fight you with ghost ship? Or maybe they want to go for Panda, control the fight. Brewmaster is not bad either. I can see that. Just yule the Kunkka, yeah. kill the rest. That's good. Definitely a, a brew. I wouldn't mind a brew game, but I, I have this feeling they're going to go Sanking for Afterlife. What else is there? Legion Commander, I don't think Yeah, makes he sense. plays a lot of Legion Commander, but it doesn't make sense against Tusk uh, Snowball save. Just doesn't feel right, and you're pretty much forcing your team to fight on the duel where Kunkka shines with both and yeah. Torrent. And you're very item dependent. Ten seconds they already have a couple of heroes that want to take some space. Well, they're running out of time. I don't think Darkseer is an offlane hero anymore. He used to play it, but Sand King yeah. just seems like too good of an option to pass up. It just it's the right pick for the player and the right pick for the lineup. So yeah. I I'm, I'm I would love to know what they were debating. Like what other heroes they were looking at, because I, I don't really see anything else in this position for this team that they could have run. Maybe a bat rider, good against the tusk, can fly over the uh -huh. shards, good in the laning stage against witch doctor. I think in this, I think in this patch you can't pick bat rider unless you know the carry matchup. There's so many heroes that yeah, just I mean win the lane still, alone. Yeah, but so. they still have the last pick carry. So. Yeah. Pa. All right. Interesting. They they have weak disable. Like part of the problem w in my mind with the Sanking pick was they it doesn't really synergize super hard with anything, but it does kind of cover some of the bases they need. Yeah. Um, and one of the things they're really lacking is is hard lockdown, and that's where PA becomes effective as a hero. And she's going to be good at, against Gyro. Just lots of single target damage with minus armor. It is hit the back line. not the easiest lane for PA though. Playing against Sanking Chen, I think that's, that's true. Has a lot of pressure potential. They're going to need to put the Witch Doctor there and and try to cover against Chen, but you can only do that so much, right? The cask is a five-second stun. 
after that Chen's creep is going to go and bully you. If he has good luck with the right creeps, that matters a lot with Chen too in some cases. Like a Seder creep in this game will destroy their, mind uh, their PA in the lane. The Mind Stealer could also be oh, good actually. <laughs> well, there's there's many creeps that are good. The Chain Lightning Harpy would be great. Like he just needs to harass the PA out of lane, drain all her region, yep. and then Sanking wins alone. So. I hear the other games going on, but I'm not sure if which game is the one we're supposed to be like. Oh, we are supposed to be doing the Empire game though. Okay, okay. Uh, so I think guys were actually going to be jumping ship from this game into the other one. Well, we that's okay. We, we just analyze we, the whole draft, and then we don't even get to see them play. I understand. I mean, you can take it now and then test yourself that later when we find the result, you can be like, oh, well, well I dissected that game perfectly. Mm -hmm. So, so, let's, let's, pick so now pick a team. Now pick a team to win, and Gambit. We'll check it out later. I like Dire. Was that Gambit? Yes. No, Gambit were Radiant. They have the Chen, right? No, Gambit is Dire. Gambit is Dire. Oh, I thought it was going to be a big the, Chen. Uh, Never mind. Oh. They're the Chen team. Oh, right. I was reading it the wrong way around. Uh, well, I'm actually not. Honestly, I'm not sure about this game. I think I'll choose. I'll choose Radiant. I had them the wrong way around in my head. I think I, I'm not confident, but I choose Radiant too. Radiant, Radiant. Gambit. Dire. You're going with Dire? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. What can you oh, do, really? Oh, look at this. Flo has, I gambled, you lost. And they're playing against Gambit. How Never many, many mutes you got, though? Yeah. Uh, oh, right. Uh, we need the mute chest. Okay. <laughs> three. three. He's got three muted people okay, can in we, this. Can we get the player list up quickly yeah. before we jump I'm into the other game? I'm I want to see this. my keyboard. I want to see this. Go to... <laughs> no, don't show it. <laughs> uh, he's already oh, got it. Oh, <laughs> only, only a voice mute there for the Witch Shark not Big text. dumb, Sonic, yeah, that's me. and... If oh, I, you muted Daxak. If Daxac. I mute voice, that he is a good guy. He just speaks too much Russian. That That's what it means. But if I mute the text, he's probably toxic. Okay. Too much noise pollution for Lacoste to handle. Yeah. Just too much noise mm. pollution. I understandable mute on Daxek. He is uh, not very often enjoyable to play with. It takes very little for him to get very, very angry. Oh, so that's a shame. I think he's aware, too, that he's an ass, and I think he doesn't care. That's that's my read on it. Uh, we won't be working with him again. No. Fair enough. We'll not see how he fares Daxic. in the game. Uh, looks like I hopped into the draft for the game we're supposed to be jumping into, gentlemen. So we have Fly to Moon. Versus Team Empire. Oh, so this is also going to be the first chance we're going to get to see Tim, Team Empire play, at least for our group right here. And we already have a draft underway. Uh, I can't alt-tab at the moment to check the scores, but Empire are 1-1? One 2-1. One. Two and one. Okay. Two and one. Yeah. yeah, they're right. You're right. They're 2-1. And, and Flight of Moon were 1-1? One one? Flight of Moon are 1-1. So. One one. Yes. Hmm. Man, your memory. That's a man who got Short eight hours of sleep memory. over there. Oh, eight yeah. hours of sleep yeah. on that guy. Went to bed at 7.30. Woo! Let's go. Let's go graveyard shift. All right. Draft underway, we got uh, Wind Ranger featured back in action again. Comes after the PL Warlock Clockwork. First pick Clockwork? Uh, no. One two pick of Clockwork Warlock. Okay. And then they responded with the Rubik because Rubik is good against Clockwork. Yep, yep, um, yep, yep. And they picked Warlock because it's good at sustaining against what Skyrath Mage does. But Legion plus Sky. Is I like this a Legion different. pick a lot. Yes, actually. against the Phantom Lancer. Also, they have no save capabilities. And um, this is a free Ember Spirit game. They have no lockdown for Ember. Phantom Lancer doesn't provide anything. It's pretty much just shackle. So they need an off laner that can that has low cooldown that axes out, which means we go back to the sanking in this game as well. Hmm. Could be. Non Grata definitely plays sanking. The thing I like about this Legion pick a lot is the PL matchup first of all, but also if Warlock PL wants to try to play aggressively with the Shadow Word, you can just purge it off. So like that uh, that aggressive play yeah. doesn't really exist on the Legion. And they have a high harass lane with Legion Skyrath. Just nuke them out. Warlock is going to try to sustain, but while he's sustaining, the Legion will get CS. And the final part about it is that I think Ghostic loves this hero to death. There's nobody who plays Legion as much as him. Which is cool, because it's such a good game for it. Like, most of the time, I don't like Legion. Like, I, I like Legion as a hero, but I, I feel like she has trouble winning games because she only duels yeah, people, basically. Yeah, this is a Timbersaw game, like, I think. She just duels them, and that's all she can do. But now, with being able to like one-shot all the illusions, that's going to be valuable for, throughout the entire game. This could be a good team or so game since they banned OD. They have no lockdown, but uh, they will kind of lack tower damage, maybe. So I don't think Naive plays that hero. You think so? No, and it's definitely FN on Ember. It's one of his best, and it's it's the kind of perfect pick for that player. FN is an aggressive playmaking carry type player, so you would play like Queen of Pain, uh, Ember. His more farm intensive heroes are like OD, but still the same logic. Like you you dominate your lane, you use farm to fight. Um, so. I would actually Naive does play the Ember, so there is the option that they get another pick for FN 
uh, do they know? They don't actually know what the laning... It's Windranger or, or Phantom Lancer on mid. Well, it could also not be a mid pick yet. It could be a support Windranger and Warlock and an offlane Clockwork. I, I don't think offlane. Or an clockwork offlane Windranger and a support Clockwork. They can do a 3-4 on that's either true. way with those yeah. two. Warlock is 5. That's more or less a given. But apart from they, this is kind of a blind pick, actually. They don't know what's coming. So you need to decide based on the 4 you see what you like. I think they should put the Ember toward the mid lane and get a safe lane carry for... Uh, or actually, did they swap... Did they swap roles? Is FN carry and Naive mid? They, they're swapping. Because I think they may, there was something about them actually stably committing to having FN safe lane. So we mm. might see a bit of a change up based on that. But what do you pick here? Sven doesn't seem that great. It might still do it. Mm. Uh, Luna is not good. I was thinking about what Heroes Empire generally play on carry. Oh, they're taking a lot of time. They have no way of hitting towers. Gy I think gyro is still in the pool, but... I think they need a tower hitter. They might end up settling but for Gyro. Bad against, bad against Clockwork, though. Morphling. Oh, that's why. He can hit towers. Ben. Yes. That's good. Hmm. So doesn't have to worry about Clockwork. No. Can kill Warlock easily. It's you were going... Uh, I noticed you on Reddit talking about Morphling a little bit, Perch. That yeah. recent stylized play. Mor some people are really beginning to utilize his new ultimate in some yeah. awesome ways. Yeah, they are. Uh, mostly because when he got reworked, people were kind of crying like the world was over. And I told them they were dumbasses. And I argued with a lot of people, and therefore I have a chip on my shoulder about it. Like, um, <laughs> Replicate was like a really boring ultimate. Uh, it's, it's a damn fact. Like Just a glorified way to get out of trouble the, or something. The way I wrote about it today was like, it's a it's a shitty version of Fire Spirit, of Fire uh, Remnant. It's basically what it is. It's like, safety, out. Like, that's all it is, right? Um, and yes, you can make an illusion sometimes, but it was like, very limited. Like, So they, they, it sucked right when it came out, but like, he did get over buffed, I thought. I thought he was, people thought he was dead, and he wasn't, in my opinion. So that's that's why I talked about it. And now we're seeing just all sorts of really cool stuff with his morph capability. Yeah. Like the PA plays, the gyro plays, it was just out of control. Yeah. But this game, there's a couple shackle. Of, <laughs> there's a couple of really high-value skills in this game. I I generally find morphing into PL being pretty powerful. Having doppelganger on morph links, you can remove uh, some sort of damage over time effects or whatever. In this case, he would be able to... Fatal I, bonds? It, maybe not. Yeah, he can get out of fatal bonds, uh, which is nice. Absolutely removing that. Apart from that, maybe not the best game to remove stuff from. He could steal Warlock's fatal bonds himself. Uh, he could turn into the Wind Ranger, like you said, for the shackle shot in the wind run is pretty nice. Uh, Nyx is Nick's stun. You wave farm in, you turn into Nyx, you stun, Carapace. you... Carapace too. Yeah. That's the thing about Morphling. It's like it's never really a bad game for Morph. The ulti is never bad. Like there's always something useful you can get. So, but I suppose so. It's not like the standout game where you're like, oh wow, there's Flat Cannon and Rage or something. Yeah. But it's still it's good spells overall. I like Empire this game. I think this Morphling pick is gonna be strong. Is everybody else pretty much in agreement? Empire. I don't remember what the heroes were. You know, it was a good Nick la Nick's last ones. pick though against Ember and uh, Skyrath. That's true. They it's need a setup, nice. and even Rubik is semi-vulnerable. Like same thing on Morphling, be the setup so your team can follow up on damage. Um, I think we can also just look at our legs, I guess. I don't, know, I don't have the I don't have the benefit of a of a monitor. Come on, Rob. We, there you go. I don't know if you know this, but in production, they Thanks, try Rob. they try to avoid the anime screen. Everybody's embarrassed about it. Like, yeah, this really? So no, no tournament shows the anime bad. screen. They yeah. always go Sound here. Strategy. They never yeah. show it. I don't really mind it. I don't think it's awful. You can't recognize 70% of the heroes. That's true, because they always have like different item sets. The music's getting kind of old. You know, they gotta spice it up a bit. Yeah, let's so, go back to important things. What is things. this? What? Are JPEG. Quick, Lacoste, look it up. Yeah, somebody what type if, that in their web browser. Okay, crazy idea. What if when the players are loading into the game, there's like a piece of artwork, like a loading screen, that you can select yourself, and then that's the one you see when you load into the game? Do you think that'll be cool? Yeah. That'd be cool. What, like, what? What? Why? I don't know. Are you telling a joke? I just don't. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm talking about, you know, there used to be loading screens, and we don't really have them. Uh, no, they, they still exist. Uh... You get the or loading screen as the game loads initially. You get the initial, Correct. but when you're obsing and there's the Anime. the animation, you don't see it, right? No, don't see animation. It's animation. So only when you, it's only when you reload in. Wait, I actually don't even remember when the loading screens are used when anymore. The, when the game starts at the very beginning, I think. This is gonna be a good game. No one muted on both teams. So we're nice. Have fair, fair play from both teams. That's great, Lacoste. Now you can see all of the nice chat wheel that they're gonna be spamming yeah. out. Yeah. Awesome. 
can't wait. Morphling Skyrath. Am I gets... the only one? Do, do you guys feel like it's too much? I okay, like yeah. I was just going to say, spam. what's the verdict on yeah. the chat wheel? Now that we've had it for a while and players have definitely um, warmed it up a bit. I, str I strongly wish that players could not spam the same chat wheel twice in a row. Instantly. There's got to be a cooldown. I mean, I, I think it's okay that they have two. I just wish they can do the same one twice in a row. That, that part's annoying. Like, if they did that one twice in a row, they're slightly staggered and it's, like, harder to hear, you know? You just hate the echo. Yes, I don't, I don't like the echo myself. It was definitely you know, I thought it ruined the um, the show match. One of the one of the reasons that yeah, the show you know match sucked. You know what? I don't like the daily heroes get two bonus mangoes <laughs> in ranked. Yeah. So suddenly there's a warlock or a wind ranger, and the <laughs> everyone first picks it whenever it's a d daily hero. I think daily heroes should get extra or lower cooldown on all chat voice lines. <laughs> should get like use four in a row instead of two. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, and then if you if you random <laughs> oh. if you random you also get access to an additional voice line that you don't have. It's just like a loud scream That's that doesn't fair. stop. <laughs> and if you have all of the voice lines because you have a high level compendium, you random a new voice line that's not in the compendium from a sub list of like ten. Whoops. Oh, there's a kill. Who cares? I do. It was probably <laughs> Let's roll back. Wait, what? It was probably just like random, right, guys? How is this possible? How does Ember kill Windrunner? Right, he stayed. <laughs> he got shackled, or he got. Uh, Whatever. Oh, Wind Ranger's level one. Okay, Wind Ranger's level two. Never mind. I have a, I oh, oh, dear. So she was level one. I was. He basically he stayed too long at the creep wave and he got Chain, searing yeah. chains. Like it was it's it was pretty bad. But how is he low HP in the first place in this matchup? You're playing Wind uh, Ranger against a melee hero level one who has no damage. He went power shot, so I guess he's not power using shot. creep aggro well. <laughs> that's kind of crazy. I, this this kill is actually impossible in my book. That's that's crazy. No, well, now he might get one back if Naive isn't careful. Damn, are he's just, the, he's just eating it, dude. Oh my good god. Oh, the salve at the last second. That's right, still not is, good. I thought we were in the future. In the I think time. he should have died. I think this is worse. Perhaps he should have died in neutrals. Yeah, or is no. he sending out a flask? He's going to be totally dominated for the next minute in the lane. Yeah, so that first kill doesn't really matter that much. I mean, it's... Almost 400 gold, but he's gonna come back. Look at Naive. He's going back to the base and gonna TP. He's gonna waste 30 seconds. Yeah. He got that's, first blood. That's why using that flask isn't good. He tanked way too much on that. Both of them have been making some bit of a mistake here in mid, I think. Iceberg might come out on top eventually from this, but there's no way he should have died, for sure. It did, it's not like he even baited out a lot of region or something. He just died, you know? He What was the cost for Ember? A tango? I think, on the kill. A lot of mana. He had used Searing Chains like twice. I guess. Okay. Well, as we see, uh, top lane here, our Morphling friend has got second highest farm. Not too much trouble. It's one of FN's best carries, the Morphling. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. I think FN is a very mechanically Morphling. skilled player. Oh. We'll catch the last second of that. Looks like this Rubik continues to be pretty aggressive in his positioning. And this time gets punished for it. Would you agree with the idea that Effen is really mechanically skilled, but his decision making has been like his biggest weakness for the last year? I think he's like really, really good at just playing his heroes, but not at knowing the limits. Yeah. Also, he's easy to tilt. That's yeah. one of his problems. I was going to look at it that way. That like he might not remain, he might not uh, contain composure if things are going bad. Mm -hmm. Is my guess. I, I mean, I don't know the guy personally. Yeah, I think people tilt way more these days in pubs in general. Because that's because you're in NA. No, because people are dual laning, and usually, if your safe lane doesn't get much farm because he's kind of used to play position one, and he gets a lot of farm. And now when he's dual laning, he tilts so much, but because he didn't adapt to meta. Like, you're not gonna get 10 minute Radiance or 12 minute Battle Fury. Well, instead of that, if you go back a few months, it was the mid, la mid laner tilting from being three on one. Yes. So I don't know, now it's just another guy who you're suffering with, I guess. But maybe, yeah, you're right, it's a different player now. Yes. So if that guy only played safe lane, yeah. I guess the mid laner got used to it eventually, because it took a while. <laughs> that was a long time that mid lane was not a one on one lane, like a year. I would just say it's more like if, if you have a carry that can't catch up very easily, like with ganks, oh. then it's it can be very frustrating to lose the laning stage or to be 
getting out lane because all of your creeps are being denied, you're getting harassed. Like things like that are, are very obnoxious to play against. Morphling is also good against Nyx Assassin if he uses Waveform and Adaptive Strike. During Carapace, he can still get the shots off it. He's not true. influenced. You block the waveform damage, yes. but Morph doesn't get stunned. That's very true. Fight for the five minute rune. They'll grab their own. Not much of a fight there. But uh, they won't even make a move Let's forward. He did, but. There's two top runes unattended. Poshka gets the kill. They killed the Nyx again yeah. with Morph Skyrath. It's alright. We'll catch one eventually, Dakota. <laughs> Dude, I'm like 50 for 50 in this one. Alright, come on. 54 50, oh, so right. all? I'm like 15 50. I caught like half of them. He, he also caught that one when he rewinded, which will count. Yeah, we'll take it. It's, we'll take it. I mean, I also wasn't expecting that mid lane first blood. I mean, come on. At a minute 40 seconds, yeah. Yeah, yeah I would say that's a, a weird one. It's pretty suspect, but we'll go with it. May see an approach mid. No, nah, just a smoked up warlock planning some wards. I think nope. this is going to be a really. Tough Phantom Lancer game, especially for doppelganger usage. You have Ember Spirit with the root mechanic. You're playing against Legion Commander, and if I mean this is position five Skyred, so he might not get Atos, but if he gets it, you're kind of forcing him to get the Manta style. Not sure about the timings of the item of position five Skyred Mage. It's very uncharacteristic. Fun. I don't really think that hero is it's, a good yeah. five, yeah. but. All right, here we go. Clockwork trying to roll in. Good telekinesis. Fends Are you sure this guy's the five this game? I see Rubik with boots of speed or buff venom. He's still not buying anything on Sky. Maybe they just swapped. He bought maybe just the starting items and that's it. He could still switch. He's not on gold. He's also almost dead here. He's trying to bail out his buddy, Ember Spirit. Oh, oh but nice he gets shot down from Iceberg on Trade the off, back rope. Focus fire. He's dead. Doesn't want to use it. Oh, he's trying. Jukes. Yo. Oh, oh that's. That Take good. me golems. Nope. Not gonna happen. It was a good try, but the golems were hitting for two damage, so those are stout shield procs. Yeah. <laughs> even if they did proc, it was. Even if they did proc. Ember Spirit is level five. Yeah, like Ranger is level seven. That's because uh, Scarth Mage died, I'm sure. And because he killed him that one time, he had to leave the lane. And now he's killed. Because he was sick. He got. He had focus fire. Right uh, before Ember Yeah, died, but that so. huge experience that he got from First Blood. <laughs> oh, yeah, the <laughs> 30. Yeah. They, it was a level 2 hero. Look at this creep damage. Incredible. Incredible. So you guys want to talk about my favorite thing to talk about? What? Veil on mid-heroes? Veil? Veil, Wind Ranger. You ever try it? No, and I won't. Veto. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That sounds so bad. Why? I mean, if it's all right. You if can you cast it after power shot, or before. But you probably after. cast it before, so it deals damage. <laughs> no, you, no, you can. You can it'll it'll land oh, before I get, the power I get shot. What you mean. Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. It gives you a respectable amount of armor. Uh, it's definitely more expensive than like uh, the uh, the aqua build, but it's kind of fun. And it then once you start buying like maelstrom and uh, javelins, it amplifies all that damage too. It gives you something meaningful to do with your second null. If you go two null, that as well. So you don't have to sell it early. You don't yeah. have as many item slots. Use, but it is. You're spending about fourteen hundred more gold. Nine fifty, and the recipe is five, right? It's fourteen hundred more gold than a double a null, or and it's uh, nine hundred more than a um, uh, aqua null. Okay. But it gives you, I think, th only three more armor, but it gives you a lot of regen, lots more mana, regen, stuff like that. I think it's an item that it's isn't purchased enough, but I don't know if I like it on Windranger specifically. But I think if you have a, a team lineup that uses the Veil very well with the other heroes, I could definitely see it being a, like a value purchase if you're going two nulls anyway. Yeah, let's see em Empire's lineup would have a good usage of Veil. Yeah, that's true. I just, I don't know. Well, technically, the Ember could go for a Veil build this game, but I think he's going to need... A different type of items, probably. He needs yeah. to... Either Radiance or Maelstrom against BL. And yeah. Uh, probably Maelstrom because it procs against Windranger's Windrun as well. I also think it's a hard build to go when you're behind. Like, going Veil on Ember when you're behind, it slows you down even further on the farm. You need something that accelerates you more than the Veil. It doesn't really make you farm much faster. So, probably not the choice here for, for him. so funny to see. Iceberg is such a strange player, you know? He gets first blooded like this completely randomly, yeah. and then he just turns it around, and now he's dominating, you know? Like, after the most ridiculous death 
He's just picking up. He will die here, I think. That's four points in Vendron. He's not gonna Our die. Our Legion! Oh, he doesn't have duel. Oh, well, that is not happening. I thought he was six. Never mind. It's That's like getting really did. excited for something yeah. absolutely impossible. As much as he nice. committed to running at him, it definitely seemed like he was level six. Good snipe kill there from FN. Gets the takedown of the Nyx Assassin. We don't need to see it. Oh, he sure used his ultimate for it, so that was probably why. Did the old waveform stun, I guess? Nope. Yeah. Sniped. Not close to level six yet for the hook shot, but Ooh. good snipe of the rune. That stun's not going to find its mark. Does Gareth have boots? Yes. Not sure why. Most of the position four sky rats don't even buy that yeah. early on. He looked really fast there, so I was wondering. Because most of the time you go double null into a toss, and you get two nulls, two bracers, or no, you get two bracers. People stop doing that, I swear. Nobody does that anymore. They go like uh, tranquils with like Yules and something else. And they Maybe go the in your bracket, break. I don't know. No, I swear, watching <laughs> watching, watching replays. <laughs> No, seriously, watch Jump replays. In oh. Blast. Like, um, Yapsor and stuff. Like no one goes Atos and Skyra? They, they all go like Yule's Tranquils right now. That that build phased out. They buy boots now. I swear. Oh. I, can, I can definitely see the value in buying boots. I don't know about the Tranquils into Yule's. It doesn't really sound that appealing to me. For movement speed, probably. That way they can initiate um, on time perfectly. Yeah. Stuff like that. I love the transition that Skyrath made. He's maxing Concussive Shot because you can easily use the Mystic Flare, so you don't maybe need Atas, but Atas is mm -hmm. the best item on the Skyrath Mage. Until, except that you're a support, and by the time you get it, everybody's got BKBs. I actually hate it. If, I, you, if I you're, not having, a, if you're not having a good game, I don't think it's a good item either. Oh, can Fight you get the, the last oh, come on. He's not even trying for it. No? Okay. Nyx, your glory moment. It was right there. He's like, yeah, but I stunned them, so... <laughs> I mean, he did get the kill on Windrunner with the power shot, so that was kind of nice. Oh, that's a dead he, morph. He sniped okay. the morph from long range. Okay, that's good for him. But yeah. they could have got the deny in addition because Nyx wasn't even hitting the Windranger. So which, that was. Which made him feel real bad. Yeah. Iceberg God with a good rotation. They'll take that tower mid lane, but will they walk away with their lives? Ember trying to sweep in from behind. Uh-oh. Legion Commander rolling through, has the dive up and ready, but they blast him down, let her get the damage. Ooh. No, he bumps her back. Bumps her back twice. Sorry, Morph's like, I can't wait any longer. I'll I don't even it. I don't even think that was good from Empire, to be honest. They lost their tower first, and then they make this five-man rotation. And sure, you get two kills. It's nice they kill the Windrunner. That's a high-impact kill. The Clockwork, insignificant. And what they're basically doing is they're freeing up the other lanes, right? PL is going to almost take this bottom tier one, or at least deal really good damage. The top lane is free as well. Uh, or it was, at least at the time, so... I don't know, I, th I think they over-rotated with bringing the morph as well. And losing map control like this is its not good. Like, this mid-tower... What, what minute are we on? Minute 12? Mm -hmm. Losing your mid-tower minute 12 is... It's not the worst, but it's still pretty damn early as Ember. He's a good yeah. hero at wave clearing, so it shouldn't really be happening. Yeah, I like the build that Ember is going right now. He doesn't go for... Boots of Travel, which I see a lot. I'm not a big fan, especially if you're playing from behind. You are just you don't have items, basically. Well, when, you, when you use 2,000 gold for Boots of Travel, now he went for Power Threads and he's going for Maelstrom. Okay. There's oh, the stolen rock, one. the Stolen Rock. Exchange from both sides, the duel's out, but he just hands over the damage to the Clockwork. And uh, Radiant Re is going to sweep through this one. They really like that emote. No, it's just clockwork. Okay. This dude has been spamming it nonstop. He's about two more times away from getting Being my mute. mute. No fear does strike me as a do your nigga guy. Yeah. I gotta say. Not surprised. So that's another tower down. They got the mid and safe lane tower, or off lane tower rather now. And the easiest tower for them to take is still there. So a rotation top probably pretty imminent for the Radiant when they have their next golem. Maybe at the latest they will look to to make another team move. Empire are not looking too hot right now. It's definitely manageable, but this Ember is it's just not having a good game, and it hurts. Oh, it's not going to get any easier. He walks right into trouble. Nyx there waiting, hits him up with the stun. There is some help coming in from behind here. He's looking to sweep in for the duel. They'll burst down the Nyx. She'll take the extra damage. Five men move again. Yeah, they're just like gangbusters right now running all over the place. This uh, Empire squad at the moment. Ooh, FN takes a hard shot. 
I got a Nyx kill. It's better than a Clock kill, but look at their net worths. Like, relatively similar. Um, I guess fortunately for them, Fly to Moon did seem to bring a lot of numbers as well, so there wasn't that much gained. But if Fly to Moon are pushing or farming lanes at the same time this is happening, it's a net loss for Empire to bring that many players to this one. Look at the wards from Empire. They want to play around Dire Jungle, and they need Hook to shot. take a fight at the bottom Come on, tower. Boy. Jump up for the Skywrath Mage. This hero there. is great against Sky. Yep. It's one of the worst matchups Skywrath yep. has as a support. Even if he naturally segues into the Blade Mail or something, that also oh man, Sky's, hurts their lineup a lot. Sky is level 5 still, 15 minutes in. That just doesn't feel right. I mean, yeah, though he's involved in 7 very, out of 9 bad. kills. I mean, they want to fight in the enemy jungle, but they do they have Blink on um, Legion yet? No, he's 400 gold away. Okay. I feel like that's part of the issue. Oh, they're going to find Nyx. Yes, they do. They have a sentry on the ground. Well, who found who? Yeah. Whoa! From downtown, he jumps right out from that shackle. Nice perch. Thank perch, you. Perch didn't say anything. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey. Jump in, though. Empire not looking to let them slide right through their fingers. They jump in for no fear. He tries to make it to the high ground. Needs one more second for the cogs. Doesn't matter. Uh, that was Monkey King hit. That was BS. He saved it for his respawn. So he can give Shadow Fiend souls and base really fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there it is. All right. <laughs> is it text? Isn't it text? I'm not sure. But we'll just we'll just be sure. That's you was, have that, one was more that Lacoste or Dakota no, that doing was that? Dakota. Really? Well, Dakota has one more mute this game than Lacoste, surprisingly. Dakota's had enough of his shit. <laughs> I, I'm honestly annoyed as well. He's just it's unoriginal like, with his spam. Yeah, like, yeah. if he was, like, changing it up and using the character lines, using the generic lines, and then using the caster lines, that's one thing. But this guy's like, <laughs> this one line's funny. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not, it, he just uses it randomly. It's like, yeah. it's like oh, 15 it, seconds after. I, I bet he used it right him. there. Unmute him. Check it. Lacoste, you gotta take... Did he use it? Did he use it? Check he, your chat. Uh, no. Oh, do I hit enter? Hey, no fear, no fear. Say the thing. <laughs> Say the thing. Yay! All right, I'll give him one more chance. He just forgot. He's gonna press it in like 20 seconds. With, with no I mean, look at the chat history, he, he's dude. Like, he's like, look he, at the chat history. It's yeah, all him. Yeah, like, he, <laughs> so I, I played a game with 33 yesterday, and this guy is spamming good game, well played, and then he calls him stupid. Like, you should get some chat line wheels. This is so 2016 spamming GGVP. Yep. <laughs> It's true, though. He's like, no, nah, I'm just broke. I can't afford a <laughs> compendium. Rock is up. This is the time for the Bitcoin. Oh, Morphling. Hey, what's up? Goodbye. Gobbles up the uh, Warlock, but then here comes the potential turn. Jump in duel, and that what one run. Shackle. Preventing everything, but stolen shackle will lock her in her spot. Great Along with that mystic flare, that they will very, be able to get the finish. Steps off the forward, adapt to strike. Here comes Mr. No Fear. Cogs the on the martyr. two. Take that! Take me, not them. Do you wanna... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, FN. What did you just do? Ediana. He oh, tried to do the line. Do do you do you do <laughs> <laughs> I just went. <laughs> that <laughs> one, it was sloth. <laughs> <laughs> I like how when FN did that, he ran super left. Yeah. Of, I thought he should. I thought he. At first, I was like, oh, he's just going to jump on him and try to kill him. But he ran super far left to try to, I assume, look for other heroes, scout things out, play it safe, basically, and still land the power shot. It was, it was cool. He got a good angle for the shackle shot that way, too. That yeah. was very, very nice. Morphling's one of the best heroes against the Wind Ranger. Yeah. Turning into Wind Ranger is very nice. And Wind Ranger is one of those heroes that. You kind of have to buy BKB, but you don't. You often don't want to buy it until like third item. It feels underwhelming on Wind Rainer to have a BKB if you don't have Ags, because then you have like one yeah. play, you know. Yeah, but against this lineup, you're kind of forced to you go. You kind of have to. Yeah, go into Lincoln Sphere first. Oh, is he going Lincoln's on Wind Rainer? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh, I think he has. Yeah, he's got the ultimate already. Mm. You know, if he had a, a veil. No, it's not. He, not yeah. first. He's definitely the build. <laughs> yeah. for sure. Six armor is not gonna keep him alive. And would so probably much, so replace him if he had the wave. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, there's so much magic damage. There's no way it works. I mean, if they keep him after that first blood, he can get through anything. I'm pretty sure. That's true. Just sucks. He's gonna have to spend like five thousand just to stop a duel.
and uh, then super limit his, his yeah. uh, viability. I feel like this is a dilemma you often have in these games is do you do you itemize to win or do you itemize to stay in the game? You know what I mean? It's like yeah. this this Lincolns is great so he doesn't get dueled, but what is he going to do if he doesn't get dueled? If they're just like, oh, we can't duel Windranger. Is he actually going to kill anyone with this build? Like, he has a focus fire with a Maelstrom at minute 25. It's not great, you know? There's There's like... You can itemize to play way more aggressive knowing your risk, or you can take the safe build that's lower impact, yeah. basically. And I, I don't know I don't know if I like this Lincolns. I don't think it's it's the right choice. I think he should go for an axe BKB and then they need to play around duel. Yeah, I agree. And then he can have a much higher impact that it's way. Just so much gold to some runes. to make it Get hard the for them to use duel. Yeah. That's it. It's not even impossible. They're, yeah, they're gonna definitely stop it. Like uh, with like uh Spell Steel? They got uh, uh um Skyrith, uh, Mage. Skyrith Mage, they've got a Rubik, they've got Morph Nuke, they've got so many ways to, to break it, and they're going to do that. I think Ember should get a BKB straight right now against Nyx Assassin and Mana Burn. After his Maelstrom? Yes. I, right. I like that. I think that's good reasoning. Really good against uh, Peel as well. Stop the... Oh, you already said Mana Burn. My bad. Burn, that's what of I mean. the rocket. Nice damage. Oh, clock jumps all the way back in into the open eyes of the Legion Commander who wants to take the dual damage and will be able to get it. And a snipe on the PL leaves Radiant a bit of a disarray here. He used Fatal Bonds on them with Morph. Now he's hiding in a corner. Dropping down the slow. Dire, regroup, pull back. Bam! <laughs> FN. Fatal Bonds. Blows him up. Warlock got killed by his own Windrunner. <laughs> oh well, what can you do? FN does a lot of damage. He's got eight kills Ooh. right now. Nice, nice power snipe. shot. Snipes down. So that fight basically was Ember goes in, Ember takes everything to the face, and then there's nothing left in the tank. They used Golem, they used Shackle Shot, they used, I think, all of Nyx's spells to kill his Ember. And it's a high value kill. It definitely is nice, but it leaves Morphling free to reign in that fight, and they get. I really like the way the Dyer combined their spells with the AoE nukes. They slide into chains on two heroes, then they Rubik nuke them, and they overwhelming odds. The Radiant are already really on the back yeah. foot. Before the fight even began, they had two heroes that were like 20% health. That was crazy. And Peel even has a hood, and he still yeah. got nuked that low. That was insane. Is this a Manta game? It probably is. On PL? Yeah, it is a Manta yeah. game. Against uh, Sky Sounds and Chains. Probably. And even like E Blade and stuff like that. Yeah. It's nice to be it's able good. to destroy. It's good. We generally see PLs go either the Manta or after the Diffusal of the Manta or Sanjin Yasha and then into Heart or BKB. Um, yeah, I like the Manta the most. This game is good. So this is the Lincolns for Windranger. I think the Radiant's primary, primary problem right now is they don't have enough damage. I. I I find it hard for them to take a fight where they isolate and kill the right heroes until they reach their next round of items after going to Slinkins. Um, let's see. All right. Nice purge. Say Thank thanks you. again, purge. Oh, man. I'll try to call it something else. It's very confusing. Maybe guys. press the attack, oh, maybe. Thanks, purge. How about that? Uh, thanks, thanks for jump in. <laughs> Too late for her. She goes down. Here comes the clockwork. Oh, it's Stolen hook shot. Will allow him to jump right out. Skywrath going to be left behind. Easily gets blasted down. Rubik also going to be finished off. That's Peel a win for the Dire. Oh, Comes PL the, from behind. Look at the illusions from Morph when he uses Doppelganger. It looks like PL and Morph. Oh, what? Is that these? <laughs> Whoa, it's that PL with the cosmetics. Yeah. With the Morph cosmetics. That's weird. Duel. Oh, there's a jump duel. They do get the right PL. The damage is there. Once FN steps in to join, they'll get him down. Radiant have to... Slip away yet again. So Radiant use... They get two kills for one, but they lose their Windranger. And that means the damage is kind of gone. And Dyer can just run at them and take a couple extra picks here. Do they have a dust? Sentry. Upheaval. Okay. Got him. I mean, he got something. Oh, it was Warlock's upheaval, not Rubik's. I thought it was a stolen one. They can put two upheavals, one with Morph, one with Rubik. This is actually <laughs> insane. You can steal <laughs> two of I, their spells. I was actually confused when uh, <laughs> when, when Rubik hookshot it out. I was like, oh, he stole clock abilities. I'm not realizing it was his ultimate. You know, it's actually it's hard to follow. The only thing that's not hard to follow is, is Skyrath Mage dying with literally nothing. He just dies repeatedly. It's very easy. He's got no net worth, so he's not really handing over anything. He can't even do anything. He can't push lanes. No. He's got a level one arcane bolt. He's this trying to put wards down, but anybody feels, kills him. Feels so bad. 
Yeah, I'm not a fan. He's of just that. a silence if they can, he can catch him without any sort of defensive mechanic. He's like an amper, basically. A yeah. silence and his ulti and a slow maybe. She needs to wait for the duels or the E blade and then he does something. If he can survive a fight, he's gonna get a lot of gold, basically. So fragile though, someone breathes on him. Yeah. Just gonna fall apart. He could be solo killed by anybody on the Radiant team. Except for maybe a warlock. That's yeah. a bad sign. Uh, it's it's often what's going to be happening. It, there's a lot of heroes that will be in that position as a five. It just feels extra bad on Skyrath because you know what the hero can do with farm. But somebody's going to take that. It, else it would have been the Rubik, right? Like, I think he would die to the same stuff, more or less. He could survive against Clockwork, but he would die to anyone else on Rubik. So. At least Rubik has no field to give his team, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something. He just stunned to defend himself. Jump. He's dead. No. That was very nice. Go played. for the duel then. Get it. Rock Ember committed. Ditched. Stolen oh. rock committed. Did something. Oh. Good. Oh. 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 And the pull him right back oh. down. And you want, always want to fly almost broad. Shoot. Try to make it out. No chance at all, sir. And Great they'll even take the golem for extra bits of money. Radiant win. They, okay. they mm. keep their two big cores alive and they kill the Wind Ranger. Did you forget about the dual damage, bro? Yeah, this dude's up in 48. Right. Oh, I, did I say Radiant win? Yeah. I meant Dire win, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Ra Dire won that for sure. They kept their two cores alive and they killed yeah. uh, Windranger. PL lived through all of that, and so did Nyx, but the, relatively that should definitely be a Dire win. In addition, the Golem was forced, so. Uh, there's no follow up here, is there? there I mean, there's golem a Golem. Follow up. Get him, Golem. He's got a Yule. He could die. Golem, get ya. Golem, get ya. Oh my get ya. god, if he dies. He needs the mana drain. Ban burn him! Burn him! Burn him. Ah. Yes! Oh, sniper. Nice. Okay. The classic gank combo. Right, see, there Nyx, we go. Nyx right, that plus that, some variety there. And I know he has other chat lines. All right. He must have misclicked it because he immediately did the other chat line yeah. after. So he's like, oh, my bad. That's not the line I want to spam. So I think this game right now, graph-wise, looks pretty even. Um, the challenge that I still see the Radiant facing is finding a reliable way of killing Morphling, especially when he gets BKB. I think the damage just isn't there. They have to catch him before BKB goes off. He now has E-Blade Lincolns, and the BKB is almost done. Oh, that's a really dead Rubik. Wow. I did not live very long. It looked like an illusion. He died so fast. It's hard to lock down Morph, especially if there's Legion Commander behind you with yeah. that spell. What it, what's it called? Purge. Yep. Press the attack. Purge the attack. It's it's but they always go on uh, um, Ember instead. He's a little bit easier to grab, I guess. So that's kind of one of the nice things for for uh, the the Morphling is that it's always Ember that gets gone on. He gets to fall up and choose the right times to go in, and that's ultimately better for their team because he can snowball so much harder. That's okay. a That's a big item. Although the one thing Morph can't do is kill PL easily, and I don't think he'll ever be there. I think the jobs, uh, the jobs, the morph's number one job is to kill Windrunner. Steve, if he, Steve. <laughs> yeah. If they manage to kill Windrunner early in the fight, I think the PL can be kept under control largely by press the attack, uh, sorry, by overwhelming Fate Bolt and the Ember, especially when Ember starts actually getting items, which he hasn't been doing too hot on so far. Uh, He's almost got a BKB as well. I yeah. mean, he doesn't have that much behind that, but... It's it's the right choice, I think. This is this is what Dyer needed to identify is that when they have BKBs, they're unbeatable in fights. Yeah. They're getting three of them. Empire's cores were not dying even before BKB. Uh, I'm not sure how they're gonna kill them with the BKB. I just want to see Rubik stealing Fatal Bonds and Morph, Morphling into. Uh, or or Lock Lock also casting Fatal Bonds. Double yes, fatal double Fatal Bonds. And then they both cast upheaval after, and nobody deals damage. No, and he just uses. And they one cast one overall blade odds. and adapt to strike and they all die. No, it's just like one <laughs> one one legion overall mean odds, everyone's dead. Boom. How much is it? Two fatal bonds that fifty percent of all damage transferred, right? Yeah. Uh, that's pretty nasty. It does stack. I know that for a fact. It says thirty percent, but that's on Warlock, right? He has the talent. Yeah. It's something like two hundred yeah. or two hundred and fifty percent damage 5%. increase if you have an AoE. Yeah. If everyone's fatal bonded. Yeah. It's pretty good. Looks like uh, teasing at the Roshi a bit for Dire, but they are going to have to deal with this pressure coming in from the southern front. Oh, nice they got that free tower. This is the, when you're in this stage of the game, it is so much nicer to play with Boots of Travel on Ember. That is one limitation that they have. Obviously, he made the tread choice. Um, pushing outside lanes is a commitment now, when Ember generally can just kind of 
not think twice about it. Of course, there is even if he had travels, there's still be the risk of getting ganked by Nyx plus one. But yeah. if they have information on the map, that is not so likely to happen. He will get less farm, but he will reduce his deaths. Well, they got a Spirit Festival or some Morphling solution if he didn't have VKB. Yep. They could always stun him ahead of time, I guess. Oh, is it the vessel gets purged when you cast your ult? Only then. Apart from that, it uh, stays on you. Correct. You can't toggle back and forth yeah. to dispel repeatedly. Uh, that shit was real broken. Yeah. Uh, Ember? Yeah, he already casted his chains in slight, then got caught out a bit. Gotta run the other way. Uh, is he buying blade mail? I don't know about that one. He just bought a BKB. I don't think that blade mail is going to be that useful. It's actually really good against Wind Ranger. Is, is the only thing. If you get yeah. if you do get focus fired, like one on one, for example, then I think the only way to stop it is she has to press S to stop, and she has to stop yeah. moving. Yeah. If she I wants to move and stop attacking, she can't do that. I don't think Ember wants to look for that type of fight anyway. I think he wants to play from the outskirts and get multiple slight chains. Probably get an item that amplifies the usage of uh, slide of fist. The fights are really clustered, so he will get multiple slides off on multiple targets all the time. Like this Radiant Lightning is punching up a lot. Against PL, I like it a lot more if he takes a more aggressive approach in his items than this Blade Mill. The PL will not really die if Maybe Ember the doesn't cleave him down. I love what PL's doing. He's going for Abyssal Blade, just for the extra lockdown uh, for Morph and Ember. Uh, and it's going to give him tankiness. I think Nullifier would have been better. But yeah, you're right. He gets a bit tankier. That's nice. It's uh, damage it's one for his illusions, too. I don't know if True. that matters that much, because there's not that much right-click, I guess. Uh, it's decent slight. against Ember. Amber. Yeah. It's something. Is, it, is the Basher, like, is that a... First. I mean, maybe he feels like he can reliably get in on the Morph. Maybe that's the idea. Because I think the Nullifier is harder to use against Morph. He's likely to BKB yeah. first. Or Lincolns. But, uh... Good Jump hook. In. Iceberg runs out in front. They quickly look to shoot down the LC. Reflects a little bit of the damage. Upheaval from the back row. More fun right, ulti committed. for Lincolns, so it's pretty bad for Empire. Buyback for Clock, looking to come back in. They're able to get the upper hand onto the Ember. Morph will wow. make it away. What a Sky fight. Wrath, not able to quite get the finish onto that Wind Ranger. And Empire takes some heavy losses in that trade. Oh, that Clock hook was beautiful. They, yeah. they nailed the one guy that's sitting nearby his alleys looking to press the attack to purge people, you know? So. That's the guy they catch. He can't get forced out. Nobody has a four staff. Morphling buys one, thinking like, hey, if we had a four staff, we could win that whole fight. A little late now, though. And now they're going to be taking some decent base damage here. Will they get one racks? Looks like just the one. I think they will. It's so much about who gets the jump. And the Dire were not in a position to get the blink duel off as the opener to the fight. Now they are. OK. Oh, immediate. Yules He's on the dual, the dual jump off. in. No locks from place, no damage awarded, but uh He's well, gonna live. Well, he lives actually after the back end of a hook shot and they finish the LC. That's gotta be a yeah. bit morally oh, wait, breaking what, he right there. Oh, he because Skyrat Mage was level eleven only, so his ulti was not ready. Twenty seconds cooldown. Sky is really under leveled. Thank you, no fear, for that very relevant use. That one fight in mid just swung the game by about ten thousand. Yeah, it was actually such a big change. They got the four for one fight, and then they got a full lane of racks. And it looked better for Empire on paper because the BKBs, but the, the hero yeah. they killed made things like that, that's their that's their save a guy hero, and it's their I'm gonna duel and guarantee this important hero dies hero. Yeah. So killing him first just completely changed the whole fight. Does he have BKB on Legion? No, he's no. far away. Only Ogre Axe on him. He's been sitting behind allies yeah. a lot. This game. He, he needs that item. This game. But if he hits creeps, they know he's there. They can go another hero. Yeah. It's a bit of a tricky situation, and I think, again, it largely comes back to Ember not having travels right now. They don't have a way of pushing out waves and securing some sort of area and have information. I, is that a bottom tier one tower I'm seeing for the Radiant still? How, oh how far God. into the game are we? 30 minutes? Yep, 33. Dude, that is not good. That's the tower you generally take minute, like, 15 at the latest as the Dire. The enemy safe lane tower. You want to get this very early in the game. And it's a problem, right? Because the, the, the information and the pressure they have on the map is just... It's not... It's just not enough. But how, how do you deal with this? Uh, how do you rectify this? Like the, th I think the treads on the Ember was good. They used the tread switching to get a lot of early kills. Yeah. But is it is it justified for this mid game thing, or is there some other issue that they've had? That I think they it? have to smoke and just look for fights. I don't. If they just try to push out waves all the time and farm for the BKB and Legion, they're gonna get jumped again and lose the game. It seems like they've been fishing a lot, basically, for fights and being like, "Well, I'll play your fight." But now they have gem. I feel like they can do the smoke. Without gem, yeah, maybe it was hard. There you go. This is good. 
It's the right idea. Especially against a PL. It's hard to catch PL with only duel as your lockdown, basically. Come across the Ranger. BKB win run. Oh, jump big in. Shackle. Man, big catch on top oh, of them. Follow up with the chaotic offering. Oh, they just walked into absolute disaster. Oh. Absolute disaster. That's the worst target they can find. She has. Do you want to watch it again? Windrun. GG is cold, yeah. Ooh. Windrun, Lincolns, and BKB. So. Let's check it again since that the game's was, over, anyways. Cool. Oh, shit, dude. Oh, shit. Let's see. Please the don't perfect crash the shackle. The two heroes you want to catch, Legion and Morph, found together. Then Fatal Bonds and Golem. That was really beautiful. Yeah, Morph I has Lincolns, but it doesn't affect it. So yeah, at the game. I still think this is the right idea from Empire. I just don't know if this is the attack angle they want, and they find the worst possible target. See, she reacts in time. They're not in position for it, and now they're just clustered up. But I think if you don't do this, oh my this God. looks really bad, right? Like they just lost the game. But I think if they don't do this, they're gonna lose some other way. Like, this is the way to get back. Nice, nice positioning from Flight of Moon to counterplay this move. I mean, they they instantly reacted. They, oh, it, that was not just like Wind Ranger getting a shackle shot. It was like shackle hits instantly, a hook shot, fatal bonds. Like they were, they were all in. everything. Peel as well. Beautiful. Wow. All right. That that game instantly turned and ended. Like it, it actually. I I thought it looked better for the Dire team. I thought they were inching into the advantage, and all of a sudden, like I guess they couldn't take Roche as one negative. So maybe they just felt like they couldn't do anything. Um, and then finally they start pushing for kills, but. Two fights, it's over. Also, this position five Skyrat Mage. Yes, not a useless. big fan of it at all. Like you have a hero who pretty much doesn't do anything. We're we're, we're seeing some weird drafts so far today. Yeah, I think there's a lot of really uncharacteristic things that almost seem like experiments. I don't think this is the time to experiment. Well, you would have thought they have going. tried this. Maybe their scr scrims went well when they ran five Skyrat. I am not a fan. I don't think it's good at all, mm. personally. So I mean, it was a sky opening. Goodness. They, they were responded by a Clockwork and a Warlock. Warlock basically offsets what the Sky does. And then they he just got kind of dumpstered mid-game. I, I just don't think you pick Skyrath when Warlock is in the pool like this. I think it's a bad opening to the draft. I would agree. You don't yeah. pick Skyrath into Warlock, and you don't pick Skyrath, Skyrath when Warlock is available. I think if that was their first pick, the Skyrath, I think their first pick could have been a Warlock. They can just go from there. I feel like it's the wrong... You're thinking the wrong way around with the support matchups if you, if you get Skyrath in that pool. Ah. I don't think Sky is that bad against Warlock. You can still out harass him. You just need the the good partner. If they paired up Legion with Skyrat Mage and Skyrat played the position four, I think it could have been very different. Mm. Because uh, Warlock can't out Legion to harassers. If you have X plus Skyrat Mage, he can't out heal that. What mm. was it, the dual off lane from uh, Flight of Moon? Was? It was Rubik and. No, Flight of Moon. Oh. What did they run into the Morphling lane? It was what Clockwork and Nyx Assassin. Clock Nyx. Yeah. If and you play Rubik Morph against that, I think you're fine. I don't actually think they need Skyrath in that lane. The, I mean, he the Morph got a lot of kills though. Like he was really far ahead in farm. Well, that doesn't the argument then become who who you're trying to give more? Are you trying to shut down the enemies more, or are you trying to help your offlane more? Like they help Morphling. Morphling got really far ahead. Yes, Sky. Sky just died a lot. Like there was a lot of times he got yeah. picked off. Yeah, but if your Legion commander was way more farmed. Let's say if he had, if he okay. had a BKB, yeah. he was just or lacking Shadow that Blade item. Or yeah. Like, they needed him to set things up to make Sky good. Because otherwise, like, his burst was just kind of irrelevant against the enemy, of course. Yeah. It's kind of what it felt like. So maybe the, if, if Legion had a better time, gets a faster Blink Dagger, starts getting dual kills like crazy, maybe gets a Shadow Blade, keeps tempo in the game, maybe that pushes them into something. But it felt hard because it was like Nyx was constantly pressuring Ember Spirit. So they always he maybe always felt like he had to cover those heroes or something. He didn't have a hero to work with as yeah. Legion Commander because this guy was pretty much dead all the time against Nyx Assassin. <laughs> or under level. Yeah. yeah. I would agree. Yep. In well, addition to all that, we can't... I don't think we can overstate how important the mid lane was. I think Ember getting that first blood should be setting him off to a good start. The 400 gold, if he plays it safe, doesn't waste all his region and have to go back to base. He can maybe break even in the lane, which is really nice when you're playing against Windranger. Mm. Can snowball from there. Instead, he ends up being two levels behind. Level 7 Windranger against level 5 Ember. Got destroyed after getting a kill he shouldn't even have got. Makes you wonder, what if he doesn't get that kill? Like, how would that lane even have looked? He could have been mm. dumpstered. So, I, th I think the first six minutes of that game really set the entire pace for Ember playing behind for the rest of the game. That's true. It, it did not go well enough for Naive in this game, I think. And he doesn't split push, and that's harder for them to take fights and ganks, and then it kind of led to them being stagnant, maybe. I think he felt forced to buy treads. I don't actually think that was his plan from the get-go in that game. Yeah. But the travels would have been really late, so...
Mm. What can you do? So play better in the lane so you don't have to buy treads, and then none of this would maybe happen. You would definitely have got the bottom tower. You would have more flow in the game, more options, simply. Mm -hmm. yeah. More farm that gives you the items to, to avoid those next games. Yes. Hmm. I think so. But the next pick, let's not take anything away from that either. I think it was a great pick, that game. That was nice to see Nyx. We don't see that hero that much. Yeah. I think this was a great game for it, and they, they made it work. So yeah. nice pick from Flight of Moon. And with that win, that earns them 